Welcome back everyone to the final talk, of the afternoon session, indeed of the, of the school. We have the third lecture of uh, Professor Arakawa. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming back. Uh, so, uh, so I want to construct a family of vertex algebras satisfying certain conditions. So, so we are supposed to be uh, a vertex algebra associate uh, with coming from 4D theory, classes set theory, associated with uh, P1 with R punctures. And uh, yeah, so the satis should satisfy at least these conditions. So probably it's reasonable uh, what reasonable to reasonable to search for uh, Vitsu uh, because <coughs> cotangent band to, to G is quite simple thing to start. So what cotangent band to, to G? So this is just a, a product of G and G star. G is a real algebra G. And uh, so, so it's, it's a, f it's a function, function on, on contangent bundle is just a tensor product of uh, a function on G and function on G star. But this is a, a Poisson algebra. So it's better to describe Poisson structure. And uh, so it, this is quite easy to describe. So these, uh, these two are, are Poisson subalgebras. Here, uh, this is given by the Poisson structure of a function of this is just a kilo constant. A Poisson structure uh, coming from bracket of D G, and Poisson structure here is just trivial. So Poisson bracket is zero. So we just have to uh, describe Poisson bracket between uh, these algebras, and let's describe by the following. So so let's describe for generators. Generator. So this is generated by elements of G. So the Poisson bracket is just a, a differential by the uh, vector field corresponding to to L. So so we can take left invariant vector field or right invariant vector field. But let's normalize so that this is a left invariant vector field. So this is a left uh, invariant vector field associated with uh, uh, x. So this is a description of Poisson algebra. So we want to somehow uh, chiralize this uh, Poisson algebra. But before going to, to the vertex algebra setting, uh, it's better to, it, it's uh, suggestive to describe the usual quantization of uh, uh, with Poisson algebra. Something wrong? Ah, oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a better to describe the usual quantization. And the natural quantization of uh, uh, cotangent to cotangent bundle is a different differential operators on, 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 on it. So let's describe uh, a global uh, differential operators on, on G. 
So, so this shall be quantization of this uh, algebra. So uh, this part is quantized to, to the enveloping algebra of G. So function G star is re replaced by uh, UG, enveloping algebra of G. And then uh, uh, function on, on G uh, remains. So this is a uh, uh, so so you so and, and uh, these two are uh, uh, subalgebras. These two are subalgebras. Again, so these two are Poisson subalgebras, and this factor is quantized to the factor of the these two are subalgebras. And the uh, uh, commutation relation between uh, these two are just coming from this. Just you, so you quantize. Poisson bracket to, to the usual bracket, uh, and where x is the element of g, in this time you consider as element of ug, and f is element of function on, on g. And uh, <coughs> there's a natural uh, affinization Chiralization of this uh, uh, differential operators, which was uh, introduced. Uh, this it's a, a, a called a, a chiral uh, differential operators. Uh, Introduced independently, independently uh, by uh, Malikov, uh, Shetman, and Veintorov, and Berison, and Dreamfield. So this works. For any uh, smooth variety, although there's obstruction to, to, to construct. Uh, but for this uh, uh, space, G, it's very easy to describe it directly. So let me describe it. So <coughs> so what, what we do is the following. Uh, so we consider a representation of affine Katsumuji. In fact, uh, I consider a representation of affine Katsumuji, uh, which is induced from some representation of this parabolic subalgebra, just in the same way as uh, affine vertex algebra, but not from the trivial representation, but from the uh, function on the uh, this uh, group GT. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so this chiral drum, they, they really, they, at the same time, they define the chiral difference. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is the first paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they didn't really uh, uh, study it so much, but uh, the notion is introduced in this paper. <coughs> so, <coughs> yeah. Uh, so, so the algebra of this group is is G T. So, and this is this is a, a Lee subalgebra. So, uh, this Lee algebra naturally acts on, on this uh, uh, function uh, as a, a left invariant vector field, as in the case of classical setting. So, you can induce uh, representation from here. And uh, so, this will be the uh, a CDO on G. 
And uh, so I'd like to explain uh, the vertex algebra structure uh, here. Um, so here, uh, some big space up here. But this is uh, quite easy to understand in, in the view of a vertex algebra. So you can view uh, this as a, uh, I didn't explain, but uh, uh, jet, jet, jet scheme of G. And the function on the jet scheme is naturally a commutative vertex algebra. So this is a commutative a vertex algebra uh, generated by a function on, on G. So this is a most universal commutative vert vertex algebra generated by this uh, uh, ring. So any, any commutative vertex algebra generated by this is a quotient of this uh, uh, vertex algebra. This is the one way to define uh, arc space. And uh, the fact is that the, there exists a unique vertex algebra structure on this induced representation. Uh, such that, so it's described similarly. So we have a embedding of a commutative vertex algebra from function on this uh, uh, group GT to, to the, the here, just sending F2. So we require, this is a vert vertex algebra embedding. And also, we have an embedding of uh, affine vertex algebra to here, uh, which sends u tends uh, 1 to u tends uh, uh, identity map identity element. And uh, so the requirement is that these two uh, vertex algebra <coughs> homomorphism. Hmm? Uh, you are going too, too much ahead. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll explain that later. <coughs> Uh, 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 a vertex algebra homomorphism. And, uh, and, uh, we, and the, the OPE between uh, the image of this and the image of this is described similarly as, as this one. So, so this is very simple. So the, uh, you, you pick element from G, and you pick elements of OG, uh, CG, which sits inside here. The uh, OPE, just FL, uh, uh, G minus W, FL. X, L, F. And uh, because this vertex algebra is generated by, by this, this determines the, the whole structure. So this is really analog of uh, a differential operators on G. You just replaced uh, this relation by this OPE. And uh, to answer Alberto's question, so 
there is, in fact, uh, another affine realizable action. Because uh, so dg, you have uh, two uh, algebra homomorphism from ug. One, you send LM elements of x to left invariant vector field, but you can send to, to the right in, invariant vector field. And these two are commutes in here. So you, can, you, so you, you expect that you can do the same thing for, for the affine setting. But then uh, uh, what the question is what, what, what the level of the other affine Katsumudi? And it's given by uh, this number. So k star, which is uh, minus k minus 2 to a check. Then uh, there exists uh, a vertex algebra homomorphism. Uh, maybe I should write this is uh, key of uh, God's gory. That's Gori and uh, Bobonov, uh, Malikov, uh, Shetman's uh, result. The, uh, we have another action of a fine catsumudi. So if, if I state in the language of vertex algebra, so you have a vertex algebra homomorphism from this, this two tensor product to this uh, CDO. So maybe I write the image of uh, this one, uh, pi L, and the image of uh, this one to pi R. And, and the statement is uh, they commute each other. And uh, <coughs> which uh, induces, so if you take the C2 algebra, it, it induces uh, Poisson algebra homomorphism from tensor product of C, uh, Cg to function on cotang A. Sorry. Uh, uh, <coughs> it, I haven't. <coughs> so th this is one thing. And, and uh, <coughs> uh, another thing that this is conformal if k is not critical. So uh, you can consider the, the sum of the conformal vector of these two. So this is a, a Sugawara. Sugawara for uh, this one. And this is a Sugawara for uh, this one. And if you take, consider the sum, so this defines a conformal uh, vector of, uh, of the CDO. Hmm? What? what? How, uh, how did I fix the level? Ah, so I consider the induced representation, and uh, I didn't, so maybe I didn't explain. So I considered induced representation. And uh, <coughs> here I required that the k act as this small k. Yeah, I didn't explain. And uh, 
of, of uh, CDO of uh, center charge at uh, two times dimension of G, which is dimension of cotangent band to G. And of course, <coughs> you can you can uh, consider this each of these at non-critical level. However, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the sum makes sense. Uh, will is will define. for even at the critical level. So this CDO is usually always conformal of central charge two times uh, dimension of G. So, so uh, should write pi L and pi. Uh, yeah, you, you're right. Yeah. Uh, my note disappeared. I don't know. Hmm? Some problem. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> another thing is that the <coughs> associate scheme of uh, uh, this is isomorphic to cotangent band to, to G. So this is as uh, uh, expected. And uh, so maybe I should uh, do some digression. Uh, so, so this is a smooth uh, sympletic uh, variety. And uh, if uh, associated variety associate scheme is, is smooth uh, sympathetic variety, then uh, one can show that the uh, uh, V is always simple. So this means that the uh, CDO is, is simple for all uh, level, even at critical level. So, so this should be the uh, right candidate for V2, but we have to check uh, uh, one more thing, uh, which is associativity. So the question is, we have this associativity. Uh, So associativity requires, uh, if you do this semi-infinite, uh, if you do this BRSTIC cohomology, uh, then this does not change the uh, guy here. So the question is the CD, whether CDO satisfies this uh, property. And uh, uh, there is a conceptual experiment explanation that the, the CDO satisfies this associativity. So, so let me uh, explain this. And uh, <coughs> in general, CDO uh, is supposed to be a, su supposed to be an analog of uh, differential operators on a loop space. And, uh, but for this uh, CDO on G, 
This is literally true. Uh, this was proved by Arkipov and Gatsugori. So the statement is that the, uh, the category of module over CDO is equivalent to the category of uh, D module on, on this loop group, uh, case-twisted uh, D modules, if you properly make sense of this category. So this is a differential operators on the loop space. Is something wrong? Uh, and the correspondence is that if you have a, a sheaf, you just consider uh, its global section. Actually, this is almost obvious statement, because if you think about what should be the a module of uh, a differential operators on, on, on group. Because um, <coughs> if, you, if you recall what is uh, C, uh, differential operators on G, so this was the tensor product of CG and UG. So module over this is a module over uh, is a module on which this and this acts with compatibility condition. And uh, so the being module over this means that it, it, it has to be a module over uh, affine Katsumudi and also over this commutative ring, commutative vertex algebra, uh, uh, this. But module over this is the same as module over its loop group. So it's a bit complicated. Uh, module over commutative ring is not the same. A module over differential, so <laughs> I should say, <laughs> so let me uh, make degradation. So there's a Borchardt statement which says <laughs> commutative vertex algebra as same as a differential algebra. So this is true, but uh, the category of module of, uh, com of commutative vertex algebra is not the same as category as a differential algebra. So it's much larger. And the category of uh, this one, the module over this one is the module over the function on, on the continuous representation of this topological algebra. So being a module over the CDO uh, means that there's action of affine Katsumudi algebra and uh, uh, also uh, action of this commutative algebra with a compatibility condition descri 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 described by, by the OPE I wrote here, which is nothing but the uh, D module on the uh, differential uh, on the loop group. <coughs> now, but this, this, <coughs> but this has a very important uh, a corollary because uh, if you consider a full subcategory consisting of uh, uh, equi that uh, equivalent with respect to the uh, action of GT, meaning that the, the module on which this action integrates to the action of a group. So there are two actions. You, you impose action for the maybe right action. Then this category is the same as uh, D modules on the affine uh, Grassmannian. because affine Grassmannian is, by definition, the quotient of GT by GT. So this <coughs> equivalence uh, restricts to, to this equivalence. And then you, this further restrict to the equivalence if you consider a module which are equivalent for the two 
both action of this D algebra, then this is a category which is equivalent to the GT action. And uh, if K is an integer, which is a case for the critical level, you can use uh, Riemann-Hilbert correspondence to identify this category with the category of perver equivariant perversives on the uh, affine Grassmannian, which is equivalent to the category of representation of uh, a G-check by geometric Satake. Now, the, this geometric satake is, the statement is not only for the module category, because it's not so interesting because this category is semi-simple, but it's also a statement for the tensor category. <coughs> so this should be an equivalence of tensor categories. So you have a tensor product here, and then uh, you have a tensor convolution product here. So we should have some operation which correspond to a convolution or this tensor product here, uh, which I denote by circle. And in fact, uh, Frankel uh, Gatskori uh, ex explained in one of their papers that this uh, product here is nothing but the this relative semi-infinite cohomology. So in, in other words, you can uh, view this as a, a convolution product or a tensor product here. And then uh, you, if you look what this CDO correspond, uh, CDO correspond to the uh, delta function D module at identity, if you view this as a, a, a D module. And this corresponds to a, a trivial representation of, uh, uh, in this category. And because this trivial representation, if you tensor with trivial representation, it doesn't change anything. So CDO, with respect to this product, doesn't change anything. Hmm? Right, yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, uh, you, yeah, if you take global section, but this corresponds that you pull back to GT and then global, take global section. You're talking about the global section of delta function, right? right. On the affine grass money. Yeah. But this correspondence is if you, you take a uh, pull, 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 pull back to, to the GT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, so this is uh, uh, what this big machinery says, but if you know what to expect, you can prove it directly. So this is uh, explained. This is uh, actually done in Arkipov's uh, Gatsugori's paper. Uh, so they, they uh, explain that the, uh, if you take elements from a Kazanistic category, which is, uh, so Kazanistic category is a category of Modulo of affine Katsumudi algebra, which is equivalent to the action of uh, GT. Then uh, one can show uh, directly that the, this relative semi infinite cohomology 
gives us m back. So she. Uh, so, so the is a, the a category on which uh, G, the action of it integrates to the action of group. Yeah. Here, uh, so this has level K, uh, and this has level K star with respect to the, the right action. So if you add, this is minus 2hx, so you can take this relative semi for homology. And, and the, the advantage of this uh, is that you can show this for any, any <coughs> number. OK, so, so this means uh, this, this, this CDO at critical level satisfies the required associativity. So we, 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 we believe that this should be. Uh, CDO at uh, critical level. I don't know whether it breaks. It, it does really break. Well, it for uh, uh, but if you consider composition, it may. <laughs> OK, so next I want, uh, what, what should be uh, V1? So MT1 was uh, G cross S, where S was uh, slow, constant slow this, right? And uh, so this was a constant reduction of Uh, cotangent bundle to uh, G. So this is a, uh, 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 sorry, yeah, it, yeah, it's okay. So this is a constant reduction, uh, reduction of cotangent bundle to uh, uh, G. And uh, so there's a natural affinization of a constant reduction. Uh, uh, Fagin and Frankel uh, introduced the uh, so called quantized joint philosophical of reduction. Reduction as a uh, affine or natural uh, chiralization of a uh, constant reduction. So I don't have time to explain what is quantized dream field Sokolov reduction, but I just say there it gives some uh, BRST reduction, uh, 
quantized uh, Dunichel circle of reduction, which is a, a special form of BRST reduction uh, with a coefficient uh, of uh, M. And uh, so, because we Fagin Frank introduced this as a, a affinization of this constant reduction, uh, it's natural to expect uh, this is compatible with uh, associated variety. And this you can uh, actually prove. So let uh, V be a vertex algebra with uh, a vertex algebra homomorphism. And uh, uh, V uh, belongs to Kazanodistic category as uh, G hat module. Then one can uh, show that the, uh, uh, this BRST cohomology is, is zero for, so you have a vanishing cohomology, and the associate scheme is of zeroth cohomology is indeed the constant reduction of the associate variety of V. So Dornifel circle of reduction is really affinization of constant reduction uh, in this sense. And it plays really, uh, behaves very nicely undertaking associated variety. And if you apply, so Fagin and Frankel introduced originally this Dunifel circle of reduction for uh, affine vertex algebra to define a double algebra. Uh, so the Dunifel circle of reduction of uh, VKG is called double uh, algebra, and uh, by by this theorem, uh, associate scheme is a constant reduction of VKG. But this is because this is G star. Uh, this is just a, a constant through slice itself. And you can also apply this construction to the CDO. Then, uh, so let's define, denote this uh, uh, reduction of CDO as WGK. And I call this uh, equivariant a double algebra because this is really analog of equivariant finite double algebra defined by uh, Losef. Then uh, its associate scheme is uh, by this theorem a uh, constant reduction of cotangent bundle to G. Uh, which is uh, G times S. So this is a property we wanted to have for V1. And uh, also because this is a smooth, obviously, uh, which is symplectic. So uh, this equivariant double algebra is, is simple for all uh, level of K and conformal with central charge uh, equals to a dimension of MT1 
plus 24 rho rho check, where rho is a sum of half sum of root of g, and rho check is a half sum of co roots of g, as usual, and which is dimension of g plus uh, rank of g plus 24 rho, rho check. So this looks like a right candidate, but we do have to check it whether it's compatible with uh, associativity condition. So let's try to uh, see this. Ah, before uh, doing so, let me explain that the, we have uh, vertex algebra homomorphism from two copy uh, VKG tensor VK star to CDO. And if you re apply this Dringfield Sokolov reduction, because we are taking re reduction with respect to the uh, left action of Z, this uh, gives uh, rise to a vertex algebra homomorphism from here to WGK. And this is, by definition, the W algebra at level K. So this is equipped with the action of W algebras, commuting action of W algebras, and also affine Katsumudi. And As in the finite dimensional setting uh, so that was done by Losef, one, Losef, one can show that the uh, W algebra is isomorphic to the uh, commutant of this uh, equivariant W algebra. Uh, in, yeah. <coughs> so this provides uh, another definition of uh, uh, affine. And also, uh, so I was talking about the compatibility with the um, associativity. So, so let v, v be a, as above. So meaning that there's action of jihad and V belongs to the category as a jihad module. Then, uh, if you consider this as relative semi-infinite cohomology, so you can, this is level K, and this is, this has level K star action by this uh, uh, homomorphism. So this level sum up to minus two, two times two, Check. So we can take uh, uh, this relative semi cohomology, and the statement is, is that this is the same as the inferior circle of reduction of, uh, of V. So this means, in particular, uh, associate this associated variety of this. Uh, associated variety of this, <coughs> this one is isomorphic to uh, associated variety of uh, a Dreyfus circle of reduction, which is the same as uh, a constant reduction of, of V. And so this is something we expect uh, for, for, for V1. So uh, it uh, should be reasonable to assume that the V1 uh, should be a WG at critical level. Um, I have to say that it is DG minus a check and so 
please correct me if I'm wrong. So this is, uh, these are not uh, physical, meaning that it does not come from uh, for this real for the theory because, um, so this is not, uh, uh, this is not the CFT type. Because V0 is, is infinite dimensional. So, the, the, so this is positively graded, but uh, degree zero component is infinite dimensional and is a somorphic function on G. And the uh, equivariant double algebra is, is worse. Uh, this is not even uh, uh, bounded uh, below. But uh, it was uh, idea of uh, being a all and, and more tachikawa that if you include this non-physical object, you can describe nicely uh, the uh, more tachikawa varieties or uh, chiral algebra of classes. So uh, in general, uh, it's a, a classes chiral algebra only becomes physical for R equal greater than three. Okay, so let me state the main uh, result. The statement is that there exists a unique family uh, of, of uh, vertex algebras such that the, uh, there exists a vertex algebra homomorphism uh, as required. And uh, this one belongs to, so there's a R commuting axiom of G hat on here, and I require uh, the axiom of GT integrates to the group for every action. So this belongs to tensor product of Kazanjusti uh, category. And uh, of course, I require V2 to be a CDO at critical level, and V1 to be the equivalent double algebra at critical level. And, and of course, I require that the associativity holds And uh, it turns out that if you require these three conditions, you can show that there exists a unique family satisfying these uh, properties. Uh, so, uh, so maybe it's better to say, uh, so there's action of R copy of of GT on VR induced by this vertex algebra homomorphism, and I require that this integrates to the action of a, a group. I didn't require any uh, uh, simplicity condition, but it automatically follows that it, each of we are is, is simple. And I didn't require that any, any of them is a conformal, but they are automatically becomes conformal. 
and the central charge is given by uh, dimension of Muatachika variety minus 24 R minus 2 rho rho check, uh, which is the same as R times dimension of G minus R minus T to rank rank of G minus 24 R minus 2 rho rho check. And uh, one can also compute the character explicitly. So, because there is a action of R copy of G, so that we can consider this kind of uh, uh, more generalized character. And this is uh, written as following. Divided by this is positive uh, root. This is positive root. Uh, one minus q lambda plus rho alpha check times. Uh, so this maybe I do not describe explicitly, but this is also something explicit because uh, uh, V lambda is just a uh, wire module, which is an induced module from induced representation of G. Uh, so this is a irreducible representation of G with highest weight lambda. So this is a wire module. And this uh, eta function factor here are cancelled with eta function factor here. And finally, um, Associate variety of each of we are is isomorphic to more attached uh, variety. So remark. Um, so the properties. from 1 to 5 are <coughs> other ones this image of classes theory should satisfy So this is explained in the paper. So the uh, uniqueness statement uh, this uniqueness statement here implies that the, this uh, VR must be this uh, chiral algebra of classes. But then, uh, fi last statement implies that the beam rusty conjecture is uh, mathematically true. 
is, is true for a classes theory. Here, I'm a bit cheating. Uh, in fact, I have to assume that the G is simply laced because then uh, this classes theory is not really defined in this way. So nothing wrong with the non-simply laced case, but this vertex algebra are not, not physical. And uh, uh, recently, so the G not, if not simply laced, simply laced, then uh, this is not, not physical. So recently, uh, uh, beam and NEA extended uh, the above result. To, to the uh, twisted uh, classes theory where non simply less type group appear. But they, what they do is more interesting because they glue of modules from different D algebra using. Yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah. so I, you are, I think you are going to give a talk on this. Yes? <laughs> so let's wait him to explain about this. Means that it does not come from the uh, for this theory. Uh, so SG, I didn't explain uh, when I explained this uh, parameterization. But this is uh, only defined for ADEG, this theory, SG sigma. Yeah, I'm talking to physicists here, not, not to you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bit, bit cheating. Uh, there are some issues about higher higher genus because uh, in higher genus we don't have uh, uh, vanishing of cohomology when we do associativity, and there are some issues there. And uh, uh, there's a paper by uh, Yanagida which uh, works on this, but using the uh, language of derived category. But I heard it's not satisfactory approach for, for physicists. So uh, we have to do some, we have to think about how to. So the issue is the existence of the uniqueness is proven. So if it, if it exists, there is a unique extension, right? For higher genus? So this I, I, I haven't even checked either. Yeah. Okay. Um, any question about the statements? Uh, if not, I want to explain uh, a proof or a construction of uh, this uh, uh, classes chiral algebra. So first thing we notice that the, uh, I mean, I already explained associate activity for 
S equals to 1 uh, implies, the, implies that the v, VR should be a Dunifel circle of reduction of uh, VR plus 1. So this means that the enough enough to construct uh, a inverse functor to this uh, uh, dream field circle of reduction. So if we can go back, so we are done. And uh, in order to do this, uh, I use uh, really the fact that the, we are at a critical level. So there's a theorem of Fagin and Frenkel, which says uh, uh, double algebra at critical level is commutative and and isomorphic to the center of this affine uh, vertex algebra. So maybe I write centers G of G hat of uh, V of minus a check G. So this is called Fagin Frankel center. So, so this is really a nice analog of uh, the constant theorem. So this isomorphism induces isomorphism between those sets of algebra. And maybe I didn't explain uh, where, but this is isomorphic to, so as I explained that associate scheme is a, is, 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 is a constant through the slice. So the C2 algebra is a function on the constant through the slice. And this is, maybe I should do the inverse direction, but uh, <coughs> so this is uh, isomorphic to, uh, the uh, invariant function on G star. And the fact that this map, this is isomorphic to this, is a uh, uh, well-known uh, old result of, of constant. So, so, this <coughs> so this is just a restriction map. And uh, so this is a really nice uh, affinization of constant's result. Okay, so so if if we, we if we are able to construct the uh, inverse functor, then we should be able to construct everything from a v one, right? If you so <coughs> so we expect that we should be able to recover. Uh, VR for from uh, V1. So, in particular, uh, we should V2, which is CDO, should be obtained from of uh, V1, which is equivalent to double algebra. So let's think about how can how we can do it. So this one has two 
commuting action of g hat. So this one has only one action. So if you want to uh, have something which have two action of uh, affine cuts, the algebra from which the one which has only one action, the most natural thing is to consider the tensor product. So then we have two commuting action of this. And of course, this is too easy and it is not correct. But uh, it's suggestive to uh, think about what goes wrong with this uh, speculation. So we have a, a vertex algebra embedding to uh, V1. So on, on V1 tensor uh, V1, we have embedding of tensor product, two tensor product of this critical affine vertex algebra. However, uh, on CDO, uh, we do have vertex algebra homomorphism from here to here, but this is not Uh, injective. In fact, it's always true that they are committed to each other in here. But what happens at critical level is that the committant in itself is not zero. So we have Fagin Fenkel center inside. So what is true that the it factors through this tensor product over Fagin Frankel center, and this one is, is, is injective. So this is. Uh, analog of classical result, uh, we have uh, algebra homomorphism from tensor product UG to differential operators on G, which sends a left invariant vector field and a right invariant vector field. But this factors through uh, uh, this uh, algebra. So this is our result of uh, uh, narrating, I think. <coughs> so, if you want to have some uh, CDO from tensor product of V1, we have to somehow identify the action of Fagin Frankel center. And because Fagin Frankel center is commutative, uh, this, is, uh, this can be easily done by considering a certain BRST cohomology. So that's what I want to explain. So can construct a BRST a cohomology that identifies two, two action of uh, Fagin Frankel center. So, so this is uh, uh, generated by uh, R elements R elements, where R is a rank of, of G. Well, here, uh, so these correspond to a, a invariant polynomial. So, um, so this, so this correspond to. A, 
So image in the Zeus-Sitz algebra is, is the image of this uh, polynomial uh, elements. And then uh, you can do the following. So, so you have tensor, let's consider tensor product of two equivalent double algebra. And then uh, tens let's tensor with a BC system. Uh, R, uh, R copy of tens uh, BC system. So these are uh, 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 vertex algebra are uh, generated by BIG, CIG, which are, are odd, and satisfying this simple uh, OPE. So this is a free fermions, the free fermions. Then we can consider following a field, so PIG tensor 1 minus 1 tensor PIG tensor uh, CI. And because uh, faking Frenkel center is commutative, uh, it, it, it follows quickly that this square of zero mode is zero, so that this defines a, a BRST cohomology. And by definition, if you consider corresponding cohomology, ah, sorry, I forgot to. Right, minus a check zero Z there. If you consider correspond to cohomology, uh, in you find that the this field is I I the same as uh, this field. So this co in this cohomology, BRST cohomology uh, action of Feige Frankel Center and Feige Frankel Center is identified. And then uh, you can hope that the, this might be isomorphic to the CDO, and in fact, it is the case. So, H0 of this PRST cohomology. is isomorphic to D, G minus H, J prime. So this is, so this is an uh, analog of the fact that the uh, function on the cotangent bundle can be recovered from two copy of G times S by taking uh, this uh, uh, invariant with respect to this uh, uh, group scheme. So if I illustrate by picture, CDO correspond to the uh, P1 with two punctures and equivalent double algebra correspond to P1 with one puncture. And uh, uh, this theorem says if you let them talk through faking Frankel center, uh, you get uh, this one. And then uh, now you can expect that th this should be the same for all punctures. For example, if you want to have something with three punctures, you consider three of it and let them talk each other through the faking Frankel center.
to make it uh, precise, uh, let me denote the, uh, this BRSD cohomology I introduced as uh, uh, H of a fifth. So this is W G tens uh, M tens uh, B C tens uh, R and Q R zero. And uh, one can uh, show that the, uh, this defines uh, indeed inverse functor to the Dunifel Sokolov reduction in this sense. So V can be recovered from Dunifel Sokolov reduction by considering this kind of uh, uh, gluing. So, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I should not use this data. Yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just followed my. Yeah, yeah, funk, yeah, yeah. So uh, you can uh, define inductively. HR from uh, VR minus one. Then uh, uh, VR minus one. Hmm? Yeah. <coughs> and but but this is you can do it of of course at the same time. Uh, you can start with. Uh, this is a statement. But uh, you can start with R copy of uh, equivalent double algebra and consider uh, <coughs> R. So R for rank and R for, <laughs> uh, this is not good, uh, B. B minus one. So you can find, uh, you can do uh, uh, identification at the same time. So you can, you can let them talk each other at the same time. So this, what this cohomology represent. And then uh, you find that the uh, uh, VR satisfies satisfies the desired desired properties. And uh, uniqueness is uh, clear from, from this uh, statement. So finally, I have five minutes. Let me explain example. So when G equals to SL2, MT3 was three tenths tens, uh, tens product of C2. And uh, V3, is nothing but the uh, beta gamma system corresponding to this uh, sympathetic vector space. So this is a, a while uh, vertex algebra. So natural quantization of sympathetic vector space is a while algebra. And its affinization is called a beta gamma system or a while vertex algebra. So this is a free field. But if you recall what is MET4, this was uh, minimal nilpotent of closure in D4. And uh, if you compute uh, this, uh, sorry, 
uh, uh, V4, you find that this is isomorphic to simple affine vertex algebra associated with D4 at level minus 2. And of course, level minus 2 is a critical level for SL2. So this was uh, conjectured <coughs> by being a O. And uh, the statement that the, its associated variety is isomorphic to So this was proved earlier by myself and Amoro uh, for a different motivation, but this reproves uh, that statement. And for ah, so associativity so for in the setting of symplectic variety, this was ADHM construction for minimal nilpotent orbit closure. And the uh, associativity for the uh, chiral algebra states that the uh, relative semi infinite cohomology of this beta tensor product of this two tensor uh, of, of beta gamma system is isomorphic to uh, my level minus two simple affine vertex algebra of SO8. And this is induced from uh, rather easy. So we can find easily the exact map from uh, here to this tensor product of beta gamma system. In fact, to, to the commutant of SL2, But the image is not simple at this point. It only becomes simple after taking a BRST homology. And for G equals to SL3, uh, MTE3 was minimal nilpotent orbit closure in E6. And as you can guess now, uh, V3 is a, a simple affine vertex algebra of E6 at level minus 3. And minus 3 is a critical level for SL3. So, but uh, there's no simple uh, description. of uh, uh, VR in general. And because Muatachika varieties are completely new, sympathetic variety, these vertex algebra are completely new a family of uh, vertex of beta algebras. OK, so I, I stop here. Do you have a like vanishing result for the higher cohomology, the FF cohomology? Ah, uh, we don't have a vanishing. Um, uh, does it have a physical meaning? 
I don't really know how to control higher cohomology. It does, there's obvious, but it's not too, too bad. There's obvious uh, uh, reason why they survive, but it uh, doesn't look so bad. But, so there might be some meaning, but I, 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 don't, I don't have any idea how to describe it. So you, you don't necessarily expect it vanishes? I don't think it vanishes, yeah. Thanks. Um, do you re <laughs> sorry? Do we expect that if we instead of uh, working with the regular nilpotent element, we work with another nilpotent orbit? Uh, the sequence of VR you built makes sense, and then we we could make an interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, there is a classic theory which encodes the information of um, nilpotent elements on each punctures. And this gives uh, rise to uh, classes theory depending on the uh, data. But this follows from this construction. You can uh, uh, construct chiral algebra uh, from uh, this chiral algebra, at least for genus zero. Another question? Uh, one thing. That's a delta I zero in that uh, isomorphism, right? <clears throat> in the the top left isomorphism, like you have, you know, semi infinite plus I on the left hand side. Oh, uh, so this is <laughs> thank you delta I zero. Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, one more thing is, you, you didn't really discuss um, the zero puncture case. You have some results about that as well, right? Ah. <clears throat> Uh, zero puncture case is in fact very interesting. Um, so, as I said, so MT zero is the uh, universal centralizer. So, this is isomorphic yes, to the uh, equivalent cohomology of affine Grassmannian. So. You can define M0 to be a during field circle of reduction of uh, V1. I think it's homology, right? Hmm? It, the homology of that? Oh. Uh, uh. And then uh, you get something which chiralizes this universal centralizer. And this was, uh, in fact, uh, introduced by uh, Igor Frankel and Stilkos. I forgot how to spell it. Maybe this is wrong spelling. Uh, for, in the case of SL2, as uh, a modified A regular uh, representation of uh, Avirazor algebra. And uh, uh, so this is a very interesting uh, chiral algebra. But uh, uh, this is not uh, positively graded. Uh, so you can describe, for example, for SL2. This has a very simple description in terms of uh, uh, generators and OPEs, but it's very difficult to find conformal vector, working vector, for example, because it's not positively graded. But, but you can still find the conformal vector. And uh, yeah, uh, the answer is I don't know much about this uh, chiral algebra, yeah, but this is very interesting. One thing, in, in the finite case, you had this statement, like there's an action of this group scheme, and by taking invariance, you can kind of build the next step up, like this uh, ginsburg cajun result. Is there a sense in which, like, your H0FF construction is kind of, like, built from some kind of action with this? I mean, you know what I mean? Um, kind of chiral analog of that statement? It would be great if you can find such a <laughs> construction. At the moment, I don't know how to do it.
other questions? Let me check on the Zoom. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if not, let's uh, thank Professor Arakawa again for a very interesting many <laughs> Um, as a last speaker, I'd like to propose you to thank real organizers. So let's thank uh, the floor. And Raymondo. 